Okay, guys, so we're going to look at Kennedy, um, John F. Kennedy, Lyndon Johnson, domestic policies, as well as Kennedy's foreign policies in this section. Um, we're going to look at Johnson's, LBJ's foreign policies when we get to the Vietnam War and look at what impacts him um, or what the, really the significance of what impacts him is the Vietnam War in terms of his foreign policy. Um, of course, domestic means existing or occurring inside a particular country. The opposite of this would be, you know, foreign or international. So we're not referring to anything foreign or interna international when we talk about domestic policies. We have to first look at Kennedy's um, you know, rise to the presidency and what happens. Um, he does make the promise to get America moving again, which a lot of people like. Um, a very well-organized campaign. He was handsome. He was charismatic. My grandmother was in love with him. Um, I'll just be honest. Um, but I'll, I'll be very honest. She also was in love with Bill Clinton. So that says, you know, her taste in, in, in view or in uh, men, I guess is the best way. Anyways, she's allowed. She allowed to be 93, so she can do what she wanted. Um, voting Democratic, you can see here, they've got, you know, a lot of campaigns. Kennedy is our first Catholic. Think back to um, when we talked about the KKK and, and who they hated. They hated Catholics, Jews, African Americans, um, and immigrants. And, and Catholics are at the forefront. So it's kind of interesting that we are electing a Catholic. Americans were concerned that the a Catholic president would listen to the Pope instead of doing what's best for the country. And so Kennedy reassures the Americans there where he says he believes in America where the separation of church and state is absolute. Like we said, young, charismatic. People liked him, you know, very good looking. Um, on the opposite side, his opponent was Richard Nixon. Richard Nixon was um, Eisenhower's, or Ike was his nickname, Ike's vice president. And really, Kennedy and Nixon agree on a lot of issues, domestic and foreign policy issues. But two factors are going to put Kennedy on top for this election, and that's television um, as well as his reaction to civil rights. Um, so here you've got some really interesting buttons. You can see the Kennedy buttons here. Um, you know, youth for Kennedy, young people are involved. You know, here, again, the mammy image is not acceptable nowadays, but it's the 1960s. People had not really um, recognized that this was not, you know, not appropriate. But you can see mammy start packing. The Kennedys are coming. Um, Viva Kennedy, you know, the Hispanics also. If I were 21, so again, young people that can't even vote yet. Although, remember, the voting age now is age 18, and that's because of the Vietnam War. And here you can see Nixon's buttons. Um, John F. Kennedy's nickname was Jack. That's why the, the elephant button you see there where he calls him Jack. Um, and, of course, Dick is a, um, a nickname for Richard. It did not mean what it means now, um, which is why he did. They'll call him Tricky Dick, actually, when he does take the presidency in 1968, which always gives my kids a giggle. Um, so feel free to giggle. That's okay. Um, September 26th, they do hold a televised debate between the two candidates. Um, and Nixon speaks... Um, as well as Kennedy, and they're really about the same age. Of course, they, in looks wise, you know, they really don't look the same age. Um, but I love this quote here that night, image replaced the printed word as the national language of politics. People that listened to the debates on the radio thought that Nixon won. If they watched it on TV, they thought that Kennedy had won. And I, that's a great picture right there. You can see Kennedy's smile. He looks cool, calm, and collected. Nixon um, looked kind of sweaty and nervous. Um, and he just, he was a nervous guy. That's just how it went. Um, and you can see here, that, again, that's um, the picture on the left is actually Kennedy in World War II. Uh, let's talk about this for a second. So kind of what, what happens. Um, Kennedy was tan. You know, he was a sailor. He, you know, had owned a sailboat, was outside a lot, did a lot of activities. Um, he was, like I said, tan, good looking, you know, good complexion. He sits down in the makeup chair to get his makeup. I know it's black and white TV, but they did wear makeup. Um, and the girl was like, our guy, actually, because there were a lot of, actually, most makeup artists were guys back then interestingly enough, um, said, you know, it really, you don't need any makeup. And Nixon overheard this, and he's like, well, if Kennedy's not going to put makeup on, neither am I. And the, the picture on the right of Nixon, this is actually later on, he was not that old um, in the debates. But people said, or an observer said, that Nixon looked like a sinister chipmunk or an evil chipmunk, which that always makes me giggle. Um, so the Eisenhower, or as far as um, African Americans, Eisenhower administration really hadn't gotten involved in civil rights all that much. The Little Rock Nine was about, you know, one of the few times that, that Eisenhower had actually got involved. Um, whereas Robert Kennedy, JFK's brother, had actually worked to get um, Martin Luther King released from prison when he had been arrested during one of the marches. Um, and so the African American community realizes that the Kennedys are sympathetic to the cause and that they will get involved um, and help. So you can see here, no comment Nixon versus a candidate with a heart, Senator Kennedy. So this goes out to the African-American population, and they like Kennedy. Um, in fact, I would actually, it's kind of interesting. If you go and watch some movies, sometimes you'll see, if it's a 1960s movie and it's an African-American family, sometimes you'll see a picture of Kennedy on the wall. Um, and I know there's a, excuse me, a lot of African-American families that um, put pictures of Barack Obama when he became the president. Well, Kennedy was very similar in that regard. 
Um, a lot of homes had Kennedy hanging on their walls. Although it sounds like Kennedy would have won this in a landslide, it actually was really close. Um, if you look at the the votes there, you know, I know it doesn't look like, oh, you know, it's less than 100, but the popular vote was close. Um, the electoral votes within the uh, states were very close. And so, um, again, not a landslide election. Here is him at the ticker tape parade. Kennedy clinches it. He wins. And so in his inaugural address, he delivers one, probably one of the most famous um, lines and, and if not one of the most famous speeches, um, aside from, you know, a couple of others, I would argue uh, FDR's, uh, we have nothing to fear but fear itself. That's a, a very significant line that a lot of people remember. And this is also one, ask not what your country can do for you, ask what you can do for your country. And that's going to set the tone for his domestic policies here in the United States. Kennedy is going to get um, young people involved. He's going to get as many Americans as he can involved. Um, and, and responsible for, you know, the government and what they do. My husband is a super recognizer. I don't know if you know what that is. It's kind of odd, to be honest. It means that he looks at people and he can take years off or add years on, um, like in his brain. And he can actually, you know, see and recognize people. If you've ever seen like pictures of celebrities in high school and you're like, oh my gosh, that totally looks like them. Like that doesn't make you a super recognizer. But there's some that like I'll look at and I'm like, I have no idea who that is. And I'll be like, oh, that's so-and-so. And I don't recognize him. Anyways, he looked at this picture. I, to be honest, I had no idea. Do you recognize this guy here? Because I didn't recognize it until he says it. Um, this is another president. Um, who will come a little bit later. This is actually Bill Clinton as a young lad. I say young lad. God, that makes me sound old. As a young man, um, he did meet JFK, shook his hands. They snapped this picture. And this is one of those things that when um, Clinton campaigns, he will, you know, talk about his you know, admiration for John F. Kennedy, you know, which is, you know, what made him become a Democrat, that kind of idea. And there were a lot of similarities, actually, between Clinton um, and Kennedy. We'll mention those here in a little bit. Um, so the Kennedy mystique. The American public is fascinated with the Kennedys. Um, I, I love the example there. JFK could read 1,600 words a minute, so thousands enrolled in speed reading classes. That's actually not a bad idea. I'll be honest. My mom made me do this. I actually think it's probably because it was popular in the 60s. Um, but she made me do a, a speed reading course that was an at-home one, and it's actually probably one of the most um, smartest things that she ever made me do. I hated it when I did it, but it, it's allowed me to read and comprehend much faster than I would have had I not done it. Um, Jackie, his wife, also captivated the nation with her eye for fashion and culture. Whatever she wore, people wanted to wear. Um, you know, whatever she did, people wanted to emulate her. They just really looked at her and thought that, you know, she had her life together. You can see the family there, her clothes, her style, you know, the pearls that she made famous, the um, pink. She always wore pink. She's known for that. She wore pillbox hats, um, which were like those little box hats that you wear. Um, everybody wanted those. And then there's, you know, kind of a, a gif that was created with a pictures. Anyways, we'll, we'll talk about Kennedy. Um, Kennedy was not faithful to his wife. Um, it probably his most famous affair that famous affair that he had was with Marilyn Monroe as, uh, she cheated on her husband and he cheated on his wife. However, um, she was not his only affair. It's, um, said that there were multiple, multiple multiple many women. Um, if you've never seen the footage of her singing Happy Birthday, Mr. President at the White House, um, she got drunk, took the stage, sang. It was very sexual. It was very awkward because Jackie was in the front row. Um, and it's one of those things like, ooh, it's a little um, skeezy, especially when you know the background. But the Kennedys, like Marilyn Monroe, um, I, the Kennedys, not only are they known for charm and, and good looks, but they're also known, most of them, as being womanizers. We'll just throw that out there as we move forward. Um, John F. Kennedy, one of the things that he did when he took the presidency was to bring around young people um, into the White House. You know, he had people in their 30s that advised him that, you know, provided or served as aides to him. And that's different than what we see. Most of the time it was, you know, old people. But now with the Kennedys, they are younger and they are employing younger people. RFK, Robert F. Kennedy, John F. Kennedy's brother was his closest friend and advisor while he was in the White House. Um, he appointed Robert Attorney General at 35. I am 36. This makes me feel, uh, you know, a little uh, underdeveloped as a human being when I, I think of somebody that's younger than me being Attorney General of the United States. That's insane. Um, but he did a good job at, at it. And he actually was able to go through. And if you've watched any of the, the Irishmen or any of those, they talked a little bit about RFK being involved in trying to break the mob. Um, and that's what he's known for and actually break some um, union patronage that also took place. People thought that Robert Kennedy was hot, too. Again, he's known for being a womanizer. He was known for cheating on his wife as well. Um, just kind of a notable event of the two. Um, Robert Kennedy does run for the presidency. Um, golly, I'm trying to think what 
campaign that was because he doesn't get super far into it um was it 68 I think he was running in 68 against Nixon or was going to and then um he ends up he was at a, a campaign he was giving a speech at a hotel for the campaign and Sirhan Sirhan actually shot him um I believe Sirhan Sirhan if I'm remembering correctly I was get there's a lot of assassinations in the 60s um you've got of course JFK at the beginning you've got Martin Luther King later Robert Kennedy later on um John Lennon I believe actually that's 70s but there's a lot of you know different people that commits these and it's easy to get him confused um there's a picture of robert kennedy even the old ladies think that he's hot anyways um his domestic program john f kennedy's domestic program is called the new frontier he wanted to focus on areas or explore areas of science space um, prejudice poverty surplus and try to help those particular areas um one of the first programs that he launches is the peace corps it's a volunteer program to help latin american asian and african countries stimulate their economies um, and try to help them resist communism it's an example of containment you know, continuing that policy. He also wants to stimulate our economy here at home and pushed for deficit spending. Um, this is an example of a Peace Corps volunteer. He's in India trying to help. They'll build schools. They provide, like, help with people wanting to create businesses. Um, it's just all meant to um, help third world nations kind of get on their feet or develop some kind of economy. Um, I know you can still actually go and be a part of Peace Corps. I've had a couple students that have done this. And right now, I believe my um, one of my really good friends that lives in Charlotte here, her sister is in Ghana. She was a psychology major and actually did some um, psychology practice when she got out and decided that she wanted a, a change of scene and to do something for other people. And so she went to Africa um, to do that. Like I said, I believe she's in Ghana, if I remember correctly. She's still in Ghana, actually. She signed up for like another tout. I don't know who that is. Sorry. <laughs> All right. So the Peace Corps, you can see here, you know, people volunteering. It's a Norman Rockwell painting, one of my favorite painters from, you know, older times of American life. I think his paintings are interesting. Anyways, um, the space race. Kennedy, if you think, um, if you've ever been to Florida and visited the Kennedy Space Center, the headquarters of NASA, um, it, it's named, of course, after Kennedy because he's the one that pushes for this. He gives a speech where he says, you know, we choose to go to the moon in this decade, not because it is easy, but because it is hard. Um, and we wanted to be the ones to beat the Soviet Union. They had already launched um, Yuri Gagarin into outer space. They beat us as the first man going into outer space was a Soviet. Um, our first man in outer space was John Glenn. That's my cousin. Distant cousin, but that's my cousin. Um, but the Kennedy said that we would be the first to reach the moon. And we do achieve that, if, unless you're a conspiracy theorist, but that's your own prerogative. I particularly don't believe that. I think there's too much evidence that points otherwise. Um, and there's explanations for all this. You have to remember the moon's atmosphere is not our atmosphere. It does not have an atmosphere, which is why the flag waves and all that other stuff. And it's kind of odd with the shadows. Um, so Neil Armstrong be does become the first human being to walk on the moon. Um, in 1969, Kennedy is actually dead when that takes place. And actually Nixon is president. This is after Johnson resigns his position. Um, here is Kennedy looking at a space shuttle. He's looking at a, you know, return capsule. I believe that was a lunar capsule. Um, this is not hidden figures, so we don't get to see any of the other workers. But, you know, you've got the men working on the mathematics to get us out. So we're going to quickly mention JFK and the Civil Rights Movement, not because it's not important, but because a lot of this you guys have covered. Um, some events that happened during Kennedy's presidency, the Freedom Riders, we've talked about them previously in our last little section um james meredith we did not mention him he is the man that um, when they integrated colleges he tried to get into old miss he was denied entry and eventually um kennedy will mobilize the national guard and send in federal troops to protect him to get him to campus um the demonstrations in birmingham we talked about same thing with integration of alabama similar to what happened at old miss um, kennedy has to send in troops to make sure that they can get into school and then of course the march on washington um, which supports the Civil Rights Act of 64. Again, the, the March on Washington was in 63, the summer. This is like months before Kennedy's.